Okay, thank you very much and for staying here. Uh, going to treat, uh, to talk about uh, mesothelioma and uh, these, uh, that should be gone. Um, my disclosures are here. And if you look at the guidelines um, which have been uh, uh, presented in the Annals of Oncology in uh, 2015, there is nothing on immuno-oncology. And this is something that really is hot in this uh, treatment now. So what we have until last year is that chemotherapy has been the standard. We have multimodality therapy, which is still experimental. There are two studies, the ERTC-1205 and the MARS-2. We have immunotherapy in first line, second line, and of course there are new drugs. So if we first look at the combination modality studies, the ERTC uh, has just started a, a study in which pleurectomy decortication is uh, being tested. And since it is a randomized study, it was thought to have induction chemotherapy for courses or after the pleurectomy decortication for courses of chemotherapy. And this has a reason. We also want in Europe for all the centers that participate that the surgeon who does a pleurectomy decortication is really doing the same in Brussels, in Amsterdam, in London, or in Italy, wherever. In the UK, the MARS-2 study is there that um, in, enters patients who were not progressed after two courses of chemotherapy, and then they will have four more, or they will have a pleurectomy decortication. And I think that the data from these two studies are very important to see which way should we go with surgery and the pleurectomy decortication in the future. If we look at immuno-oncology uh, treatments, uh, I will first a little about the background. The CTL4 and the checkpoint inhibition, then we're going to talk about second line, combos and first line. If we um, look at the um, ESCO, what has been published there, there was a paper on the PDL1 expression of immune cell infiltrates and the genome-wide copy numbers. Uh, it must be clear that the mutational load in mesothelioma is not very high. It's about the same as in breast cancer. So it's right in the middle. If you uh, look at this uh, paper, uh, 330 patient, uh, thir 29 patients were uh, analyzed, and there was an expression of PDL1 in 42% of the case cases, and only 10% had more than 50%. So this gives you an indication that maybe immuno oncology treatment in mesothelioma cannot be that effective if we, if we think. There was also not a correlation between the genomic alterations and the PDL1 expression. The first study that has been performed, a very large study in second and third line, was the determined study, in which uh, the checkpoint inhibition uh, by trimalumumab was tested in a 2 to 1 randomization. So these patients had been previously treated, had measurable disease and 571 patients were randomized. Trimolimumab was given versus placebo, and it had a pretty uh, lot of toxicity. Gastrointestinal toxicity was very uh, uh, often uh, encountered. And if we look at the data, well, you cannot get your thumb between the two lines. So this was unfortunately a very negative study. However, uh, there was also interest to go on with the uh, checkpoint inhibitors. One of these is the Avelumab, it's an anti pdl one which has been uh, tested and reported by Hassan at the uh, ESCO meeting. And he found that there was about 9% uh, partial response rate and stabilization in 47% of these 53 patients. He also looked at the PDL1. Uh, uh, expression, and he said, well, the drug has an acceptable toxicity profile, shows some anti-tumor activity, but there is not a very clear correlation with the PDL1. So, for the second line, we have a number of, uh, of studies, uh, Nivomes, 
initiate MAPS2, that's the French study, and the ETOP uh, promise MISO. And for the first line, there's a DINEM study and the BMS study, which will start, both will start pretty soon. If we look at what we have done in my institution, it's called uh, the NIVOMES, it should be an N, for nivolumab and mesothelioma, where we have patients who have been treated before with at least one chemotherapy regimen, can also be two, and then we perform a CT scan, do a thoracoscopy or needle biopsies to get material, give nivolumab for uh, at, at most one year of treatment, but at six weeks we do a repeat CT scan and also repeat biopsies and we draw blood for PBMCs. We looked at the primary endpoint that was to have an increase of 20% disease control rate to 40% at 12 weeks and of course we look at overall survival. The study has just been um, ended and has been reported at uh, World Lung. Uh, of the 34 patients we entered, we found that there was 24% of partial responders at that time of 12 weeks, stable disease in 26% of the cases, so a disease control of 50%, and the remaining 50% progressed within this time. Toxicity was very acceptable in this group with this uh, single agent therapy. But the progression-free survival in this uh, pre-treated group was 3.7 months. This is a swimmer plot and uh, it's a very busy plot, but it, it also allows you to read on who is failing. Uh, so you can see the blue bars are the epithelioid type, the green ones are the mixed type, and the red ones are the sarcomatoids. And the black dots mean that the patients have uh, already died, and the yellow uh, diamonds indicate the um, CT scans that were uh, showing to have a response. So we do have a group of a number of patients who can be treated for a long time. But the majority, of course, are uh, progressive or have deceased within uh, about, about uh, six weeks. Uh, sorry, 24 weeks. This has led us, since we finalized the study, to the initiate study where we combine mm -hmm. ipilimumab and nivolumab. And it's the same setup as the uh, nivomas uh, study. But now we said if you're adding something more, you want to have the disease control to be much better. So disease control at 12 weeks of at least 60%. So now that we have chosen for three milligrams uh, per kilogram of nivolumab every two weeks and one milligram of per kilogram of epilimumab, but we only give it four times every six weeks apart. And we do the same translational research. Another study that has been reported on the world lung by Hedy Kindler was the pembrolizumab study in mesothelioma, which is about the same. The patients were, um, if we look in more in detail, in a bit better condition than we had in our NIVOMAS study, uh, but they were, had also been treated prior, previously with uh, chemotherapy. They were treated with pembrolizumab, 200 milligrams, flat dose, every three weeks until progression. And the data that she presented was indeed 21% had a partial response and 59% had stabilization of the disease with a progression-free survival now of 6.2 months, which is, of course, pretty promising. So in unselected uh, patients uh, with malignant uh, mesothelioma, it shows to, uh, it seems to have a robust activity. And now part two, uh, which is an extension of this phase two study, is being executed in the United States. Another study is the ETOP, the PROMISE MISO study, in which patients in second line, so after progression of the disease, are randomized to receive the pembrolizumab in the fixed dose every three weeks or a dealer's choice of chemotherapy, which can be gemcitabine, finorelbin, in two different doses. And of course, also translational research is uh, uh, performed here. 
the aim is to find a hazard ratio of 0.58 as far as a hazard ratio can be uh, applied in immuno-oncology treatment. For the first-line treatment, there are two uh, interesting initiatives in the immuno-oncology field. First of all is a study uh, which uh, will be run in four countries in, uh, um, in Europe, including the UK. Um, it's called the DENIM study, and this is uh, by Joachim Aerts, who had this presentation yesterday, um, of which monocytes are uh, captured from the body, and they then are exposed uh, initially to autolog uh, tumor lysate, the antigens, and then when they have become mature dendritic cells, they are reinfused into the body. However, uh, that approach was very difficult and very uh, time consuming. So they took five different uh, uh, human cell lines and minced them and prepared the antigens. So now the monocytes, the immature dendritic cells, are exposed to these, uh, uh, this tumor lysate and then reinfused. And you can see it's in the, in the Netherlands, uh, UK, uh, Italy, and Belgium, and France. And we need 216 patients uh, uh, to give this treatment after the chemotherapy in a maintenance setting. You can also expect uh, the uh, BMS to knock on your door if you're uh, in a uh, mesothelioma center because they uh, have the ID to start the Checkmate 743 study, which will compare in the first line cis PEM versus EP NIVO, as I've uh, shown you in the initiate study. However, they want to continue the epilimumab in this case until progression. Now, from a financial point of view, that's very interesting, but from a toxicity point of view, I don't know if we are able to keep that up. It's a multi-center study, 600 patients should be uh, entered, and already I believe there are two or three patients entered. If you look at what the new other avenues in mesothelioma are, this is Nintendonib, CRS-207, Adipec, uh, antibody drug conjugates, and BAP1. Uh, a very interesting uh, phase two study has been uh, reported where Nintendonib was added to the standard of care uh, and these uh, findings with the, it's called the Lumo, Lume uh, Meso trial which showed that, that uh, compared to placebo, there was almost a four months uh, gain in median progression-free survival, as is shown from these curves. So this is promising, and they are now entering a phase three study uh, worldwide. The uh, ERTC is also starting the uh, 8112 study, the NEMO trial, uh, in which Nintendonib is being tested as a maintenance in patients who have been treated with four to six courses of chemotherapy. And they should be still in good condition, have no signs of progression. Now, the study is not yet open, but we hope within the next three months uh, that this will be available. The primary endpoint is also a gain in uh, progression-free survival, and the PI is sitting here in front of us. Another interesting approach, which seemed very promising, was to use Listeria monocytogenes uh, and to couple this to mesothelin to get a sort of um, yeah, a way to introduce the mesothelin, this, this uh, Listeria compound that would be able to go there as a magic bullet and then uh, because it's double deleted it would not uh, be able uh, to duplicate itself and would also not uh, home to the liver to give uh, its toxicity there. But uh, when they started uh, the, this drug, the, sorry, uh, when they started uh, this, um, this study, they found out that in a pancreatic uh, uh, tumor uh, setting, uh, the toxicity was uh, high and it was not uh, effective at all. So the company has now halted uh, this, uh, this study approach. Looking at uh, another type, uh, 
of approach is the arginine deprivation or in mesothelioma uh, cells. We know that especially in the sarcomatoid type, arginine succinate synthetase is uh, lacking. And if you would then re reduce the level of uh, arginine, um, this approach would lead to very interesting uh, results. It's a phase two slash three study, and, the, and uh, the, the study is called the atomic meso, and it's now being rolled out over Europe, and I don't know if they are also going to do that in the US, but uh, it's uh, Peter Slosserek who is uh, leading this. Another approach is the antibody drug conjugate, that's a nitumab reftanzine, where you target uh, mesutilin, a protein on the cell uh, membrane and to some extent on the normal pleura, but not in other, other organs. So you could couple then uh, your targeting device with uh, a toxic substance, uh, as we yesterday heard, a sort of warhead, and then you could home to the uh, mesothelioma cells, and when it's uh, uptaken in the lysozymes, it will break down and will give its uh, uh, toxic effect. So it's starting with a phase two second-line study, and the comparator will be vinorelbin, and 210 patients will be required. Finally, BEP1, which is a very interesting uh, approach. Also in mesothelioma, we know that it can function as a tumor suppressor, regu regulating uh, target uh, genes in transcription, cell cycle control, and the damage repair, uh, because it's a BRCA1-associated protein. And if you have loss of BEP1, we know that uh, uh, EZH2 will increase, and it happens to be that uh, tamisatet uh, stat is a drug that uh, can influence the uh, EZH2. And this is a study that will be uh, initiated uh, pretty quickly in patients with mesothelioma because of uh, the, the, a subgroup that has a high uh, expression of, uh, of lim uh, high uh, BAP1 uh, mutation rate. And this brings me to my conclusions already, that at this moment, chemotherapy is still the standard. And if you live in France, you may add bevacizumab, because there's, from the MAPS-1 study, there is data that bevacizumab might help. Uh, there's promising data on the IO treatment, but it's a field very much in motion. And of course, as I showed in the last few slides, many other avenues are at this moment being uh, uh, explored. And uh, thank you for your attention.